Hello and hi. Yeah, we're coming to hang out with each other. We're going to do evenings with Anna. Hello, hello. Welcome back, dreamers and my gentlemen callers. How you doing? Thank you so much for coming by. And if you don't know who the hell I am, I'm Anna. How you doing? <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, where to begin? Where to begin? Let's, let's do a, a, a quick heads up. I went to the P.O. Box. I got a letter from Nancy W. from Tennessee. Make sure I hide her information. Nancy, I got your letter. I'll do a separate video for it. Rosa R. from California. Rosa, I got your letter. Thank you so much. Carol S. from Massachusetts. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. I got your letter. Sherry S. from Tennessee. Yes, I got your letter. And Linda M. from Virginia. I got your package. So I'm going to do a separate video for this, okay? So be on the lookout for it. Thank you. I just want to give you a heads up and let you know I got it. I'll probably post something on the community page too. Okay, I will. Because I love you guys. So thank you. Thank you. That really brightens up my day. It really and truly does. It really brightens up my day when I get mail. Because I don't get mail too often. I just don't. I, I guess I'm not very popular. <laughs> there are other people that get all kinds of stuff. They get boxes and boxes of stuff and all kinds of things. Me, not so much, but it's okay. Wow. Well, let me give you a quick update. My mom is in rehab right now. Um, she's still being treated for everything. Uh, she's doing a little bit better. She was like a little wonky. She didn't know where she was at. She, she doesn't, you know, it was like she was out of sorts. And then, uh, we were trying to figure out why they had, they had gave her, she takes clonopin and they gave her, um, what's it called? Melatonin and something else to help her go to sleep. And we're like, why are you giving her all that stuff? She thinks she's like in wackadoodle land right now. You guys are pumping her up with too much stuff. I mean, where did you, who said to give her that? She doesn't need it. All she needs is her clown pen, right? It's crazy to go to sleep. So my sister got that straightened out. Um, hopefully she will continue to progress and get better so she can finally go back to her own place and be amongst her things and be in her own bed, you know? So it'll be nice once she gets to that point. I am doing better I am retraining my brain as far as talking because um, my tongue is resting differently and I got like sore spots where my teeth, where my tongue is brushing against these two teeth now. There's nothing to chew on down here. So I'm doing a lot of work over here and in my front now as far as chewing. Um, I get bouts of pain, throbbing pain, but they said that that will happen. So it's like I'm trying to be careful with everything I'm eating. There you go. Uh, the kids are doing great. They're doing well. I cut the twins' hair. They're looking good and they're very handsome now. They're very handsome. They're looking put together. Uh, the kids' clothes that I ordered from Children's Place came in. Super happy with everything. Highly recommend Children's Place. They do have stores around the USA. Um, check out if you have one near you. I just did it right online, you know. And I, they know what they like. I know what they like. And then I always let them see what I'm going to order before I order it to get the kid approval of, you know, take that off. Mom, I don't want that. Yeah, I want this. Yeah. So I do that. Frankie got his stuff from Target. Um, I think he's waiting for two more things. So I got him two new pair of Reebok tennis shoes, um, some Reebok pants, uh, some shirts. He likes his T-shirts to be absolutely plain with no logos. Some plain t-shirts, some plain long t long sleeve t-shirts, you know, stuff like that. So the only thing he really needs is like socks because he has some big old feet like his daddy. He needs socks and um, they're good for underwear. Yeah, they're good for underwear. If I find the boxers, I just don't want to pay $20 for three pairs. I just don't. <laughs> So I'm kind of like on the lookout for those boxers that everybody else is like hauling. I'm trying to see if they're going to bring them into my stores eventually. Eventually. I don't know. But let's talk about, um, yeah, Cal California. 
uh, Florida, all the people that have suffered damage in Florida, the houses were underwater. These people have to rebuild their lives. The weather is crazy. Now, Ernesto, Ernesto is coming up. Um, he'll be coming up. When I say he, I mean the weather event will be coming up the coast and will be affecting um, the coastal lines. It will be affecting us as well. Um, we're not on the coast. We're not on the water, but we do have our boat at a marina. So it does affect us. Um, our marina always gets inundated with water. And uh, even though we're tied up to a dock, we're not on land. Uh, if it gets, if the water gets too high, that literally you can't even drive your car through there because the water can go up over your car. Um, that's, it, it's happened. Uh, the boats that are on the opposite side, see they have, you could park it here or you could park your, I say park, but you know, when they put your boats up on land. You can put them all the way down there on the right-hand side. If they're on the right-hand side, they if they got boats down there, I haven't been down there in a minute. Those boats, if the water gets that high, they'll be floating out there in the ocean. Okay? So, is that kind of event. So, I asked my husband, I said, did you make sure you, you made sure the boat was tied up good? You know, so it doesn't like untie itself and float away and smack into other yachts and stuff. Yeah, because our boat's not little. <clears throat> we have, uh, you know, with the platform... With the swim platform, it's 45, 45 feet. Is so it 45 feet or 47 feet? 40, 45 or 47? Because we have a bigger swim platform. We don't have the standard swim platform, like the little small one. We have like a nice big one. So she's a bigums. She's a bigums. And if she smacks into other boats, there's going to be damage. There will be damage. Because she's a big girl. Now, uh, I'm not even going to talk about politics. We're not doing that. We're not talking about politics. We're not. May the best person win. Whoever can provide you with solutions for the problems and issues and the things you have concerns with in your life. Whichever person that's running pick your poison. They're all poison. I see them. I see every politician as a cup of poison and they're all puppets, Muppets. Um, they're getting their strings pulled just like everybody else. And you just got to pick the one that's going to make the most sense. And it's going to make you the least sick, whoever that is for you. doesn't matter who it is. It's going to be different for everyone because everyone's going to have different issues, different concerns and different things that they really root for. So that's a wonderful thing about living in the United States. We get to vote. Some countries do not. Um, so that's a beautiful thing that we have a choice. So we should be celebrating that. Okay. But we're not going to talk about politics. So if anybody leaves any kind of comments about go this or go that, I'm not going to approve it. <laughs> so don't do it. Don't do it. I'm just going to delete it. I don't want no, I don't want not. I don't want no problems on here. I don't want no bickering, nobody coming after anybody because it, it we're blessed to be in the United States and have and have that privilege to vote. Okay? So that's the end of that. What there is so much going on right now. And I was watching Marfugal News, I was watching Canadian Prepper, I was watching BBC, I was watching CNN, I was watching Waiters. I was looking at the Washington Post. I was looking at WTLP. I was, you know, you just look at all kinds of different news, you know, things and uh, people, certain people have the ability to collect certain types of information from people that are in certain positions that release information. So they kind of give you a heads up to give the masses a heads up of what's going on. Um, I was watching, oh my goodness. I was watching a uh, Rethinking the Dollar the other day with a gentleman, Burke something, on there, and his channel got a spanking, so now he can't post anything for a week because of that interview, and then I, I, in turn, I went and I watched on Rumble, so that was Rethinking the Dollar's RDTV. Then I was watching Gray and um, Alaska Prepper 
when they were doing their joint um, duo. And then, of course, I watch Alaska Pepper all the time. I just never leave comments to anybody anymore. I just don't. I think I need to start doing that. <laughs> it's like I'm getting really, really lazy. I have to stop doing that. Ah. So I've been watching like different things, right? Different things. And it kind of gives you like a sense of urgency with everything that's going on across the pond, you know, with, you know, the, and, you know, all that. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I saw, I saw an article on Yahoo. As soon as I went onto Yahoo, the first thing that came up was a family and they showed uh, the man that had lost the twins, his twins and his wife as he was getting the birth certificates for his babies. Then the next one that came up the next day were three women and all these all these um, folks are in Palestine and what's happening in Palestine is making me sick. It's making me sick in the stomach. I cry every night as I pray for this 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 thing that's happening to them these people um they're not even a lot of people have disconnected and are just looking looking at them as numbers as as statistics as statistics uh there's no emotional connection but if that was you that it was happening to and that was your family that was being eradicated and if that was you going hungry and not finding food because they're blocking the food, they're blocking the aid, they're 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 um they're hitting the hospitals, they're hitting the safe havens, they're places where you can go and get help. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's madness. People are getting sick. There wasn't enough water. There's not enough food. There's airborne illnesses going on now. Uh, people can't bathe. Um, people are using the bathroom wherever they have to use the bathroom. Um, they're they're floating from one place to a, to another with the things that they have on their backs. Uh, they're like nomads in their own space. Uh, what's happening isn't right. It isn't right. It, I'm saying it. It isn't right. And if you have anything to say against that, I'm not going to approve it. I'm not. I'm sorry. I want to prove it. You can write whatever you want. I, I will read one or two sentences. And as soon as I see something that's insulting or something that's not making any kind of sense, I'm just going to delete it. Okay, I know this is kind of, I, yeah, it is political. <laughs> I said, I don't want to get political, but I am seeing this. And as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, as a granddaughter, as an aunt, as a grandmother now, I place myself in their position and, um, my God, what the hell is going on? <sighs> and I understand the politics of it, you guys. I do. I understand the politics of it, why we are backing Israel, why they are making sure that we do not cut ties with Israel because of the things that they have to offer to the United States. And excuse my language, but the United States is almost like a whore. It will sell itself to the highest bidder. Regardless of life. Okay, so let's try to move on from that. There's a lot of things that are going on as well in all these other countries, including, you know, the big R, the big U, um, and things that are taking place and things that are escalating. And now we're sending people over there. Uh, we're not even including Taiwan. I mean, they're spreading us thin. They are spreading this thing. They're they're making sure that they send us to a whole bunch of a whole bunch of different places to spread us thin. They are. They're doing it. They're they're being smart about it, you guys. They really and truly are. They are. <laughs> they are. And it's not good. It's not good. So what can we do? What can we do as 
you know, as you and I. We can pray. <laughs> we can pray. We can try to vote in the people that are going to make the changes to make sure that our men and women, that are that are our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren, don't go to places they have no business being at. And maybe we can stop getting involved in things that we have no business in being involved in. Um, vote for the people that are going to make sense for you. Okay. And for, you know, what you stand for. But what can we do? Let's go back to that. What can we do? I'm going to do the pantry challenge. Uh, it's, yeah, it will include deals. I will, yeah, I'm going to do deals. I'm, I'm going to include deals. Any deals that I can find either online or at store, I will mention them, post them somehow, either on a community page, on a quick video, or even um, a short you know, something like that. Uh, I'm also going to do going through my shelves and uh, trying to, you know, you got to rotate your food. You have to rotate your food. I'm also, I already have a lot of foods that are identified that my children just aren't interested in eating anymore. And I have like cases of, of canned goods that I will be leaving next to these donation drop-off zones on the outside of these clothing drop-off zones in this particular area where they have um, like the buses and stuff. We don't have like the regular metro buses or nothing like that. We have like our little city, you know, go vans and what have you. But there are a lot of people that are homeless that ride those all day long and then they go to this particular these particular malls where these things are and you see them looking. So I'm going to leave the food. There's two different or three different locations there on that one particular strip mall that, that I know, you know, um, I'm going to be leaving a whole bunch of food out there and I'll probably do it on various days. Okay. So I'll go one day, take as much as I can, leave it out there, wait for three or four days, make another drop off. Um, so I, I'm going to be getting rid of things that are taking up space that we no longer desire to eat, but other people can eat. Okay. So it's not going to go to waste. Someone will be able to use it and fortify their families with it. Okay. Um, I want to continue to bring things into my home that makes sense for my home. Definitely need to work on that. Uh, I, I have, yeah, no, guilty guilty as charged i have stepped down from that i have put the brakes on that just because i i was getting overwhelmed i was getting you know when you when you buy things and you buy with fear that's the worst thing the worst thing you can ever do you should be buying things sensibly that make sense that your family will consume when they're on sale when it actually makes sense financially. You should never panic buy. You should never go shopping when you're panicking. You will make irrational choices. You will make choices that will hurt you financially. And in the long run, you'll shake your head and be like, why in the world do I have that? I'm not going to use it and I'm not going to eat it. I could have used it towards, you know, X, Y, and Z. Every home is going to look a little different. So people, I have a bunch of videos, including a vlog, um, that I post things on there and I'll, I always link it in the, in the description box. Okay. And I previously did a whole bunch of really great vlogs on things to buy for different types of situations. What's going to work best, um, for different types of situations and things that maybe you never even thought of when buying X, Y, and Z while you're in this type of environment, that type of situation, that type of weather um, situation, okay? Just, it's, it's a good way to look at things. Um, if they, as we know, the FBI said to Congress and Senate, uh, they had meetings, they put a report, they gave them a report saying they already know that our water and 22 other, you know, large uh, targeted things already are infiltrated. It's just a matter of when they do it, when they make it stop, when they shut the lights off, when they stop making the water run. What do you do? What do you do? Every person in your home needs one gallon of water per day 
one gallon. This one gallon is supposed to help you bathe, drink, eat, and cook. Everything. It's supposed to, this one gallon is supposed to help supply everything that you need for that one day. So if it's just you, you only need seven gallons of water for one week. If you want two weeks, then do it like that. Um, it's up to you how you want to handle it. Uh, most people will not go through an entire gallon of water per day. They won't. Some people will, and they might need even more. Uh, some people will take advantage of if they have the ability to collect water from outside to uh, use for, you know, bathing or use for washing clothes or use for uh, feeding your vegetables, your indoor garden, your your hydroponic system that runs off of water. Every situation is going to be different. Every household is going to have different things on their shelves. What's on my shelves, my sister would never have. They have different health conditions versus what we have. They have a very strict diet and they know what they can have without making themselves sick. So you as an individual have to take responsibility of getting those things that you know that you can have, which will not make you sick. Okay. And just give yourself a goal. Give yourself a goal. Say, one week's worth of backup meals. One week. After you do the one week and you're like, oh, I got one week's worth. I bought an extra can of this. I bought an extra thing of spaghetti. I bought an extra thing of canned sauce. I bought some canned meats. I bought some canned fruit. Can Oh, and let's talk about canned fruit and tomatoes. Okay. Just a little ditty here. Canned fruits and tomatoes are very highly, they're highly acidic. They're highly acidic. So if you can buy them in jars, glass jars, really good. If they're in cans, they will eventually eat through the can because they're acidity. So just be aware, those are not the long-term type of foods. Fruit, canned fruit, and tomato. Um, they just don't last that well in a canned item. They last a whole lot longer in a glass jar. They will in a glass jar. And I found that they last a whole lot longer as well in a plastic jar because I have Lidl's sauce in plastic. Just a heads up. And then remember the general rule because I'm not going to go through everything tonight. Um, if it has oil, it will spoil. Just remember that. If it has oil, it will spoil. General rule. So think about your meals. Think about the things you like to eat. So if you like to eat ramen every day, you eat ramen for lunch every day, so that's four things of ramen that you'll need if you eat one entire package. You need, you'll need seven things of ramen for one week. What do you have for breakfast? Oh, you have oatmeal. Okay, so you need, how many packets do you need? One packet a day, seven packets of oatmeal. What do you have for lunch? Whatever you like to eat for lunch. You know, um, put down different menu options of things that the most shelf stable items that you can get. Think about it that way that you're like, okay, well I can do this, this, and this. And then there you go. You got backup for an entire week right there. Boom. It happens rather quickly. Yeah. Especially if you're like, okay, at night I like to have rice and beans and a, a protein, you know, or I like my mac and cheese. I like, you know, I like my pastas. I like some potatoes, you know, I like X, Y, and Z. If you can't grow potatoes, get, get your instant mashed potatoes. They last almost forever as long as they stay in a dry, cold environment. If you live in Florida or a humid environment, make sure you put those goods inside of a, a glass jar with some oxygen absorbers and then suck the air out or put them in Mylar bags so they will last you almost forever. Um, the humidity is what can kill your food, your long-term food, humidity. So cool, dark place, boom. And there's a way around everything, regardless of where you live. It's just a matter of um, educating yourself on it and learning about it. You know, we can't crack this nut all together here in this one video, but I did want to drop the I don't want to say urgency, but everybody sees what's happening. And, uh, we should, we should be preparing for 
whatever may come, regardless if it's loss of life, loss of the main income winner. Um, I remember my husband had a heart attack. We were living off of our preps like no one's business, all the way down from food to toilet paper to cleaning supplies, honey. We were living off of our supplies because he is a main income winner. Okay? 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 Yeah. So they're there for you when you need it. And the worst thing that can happen is that, heck, you, you're set. And an unexpected bill, all of a sudden you got to get a new engine, a new transmission, your roof is leaking. You know, a big bill comes in out of nowhere. Guess what? You could probably take care of that bill while you're living off of what you've been preparing for, which is an unexpected event. Because you're already hooked up. You took care of it. Well, that's it, you guys. I uh, just wanted to come in here and talk for a minute, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.